And we're back with another episode of Tech TLDR. Today we're talking about another update on the SN9's launch and static fire, as well as the SpaceX Cargo Dragon and some more news with the Starlink program. So if you're interested in that as well, be sure to stick to the whole episode because I have some new info about Starlink. That's kind of funny. So the reason why you clicked on this video is probably because of the SN9 launch. So let's get into that. We talked about this before. Friday was supposed to be the launch date, and then it was postponed until Sunday or Monday, and then that was postponed until Tuesday. Now it's Wednesday. What's been happening? So we've had multiple delays for kind of unknown reasons. One of the reasons why it didn't happen over the weekend into Monday was there was apparently a tipped over cement truck, and they couldn't launch because of that. Now they were supposed to do a static fire test last night, Tuesday, from anywhere from actually 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., now, according to this article by Tesla Roddy, that was actually extended from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., that time of clearance where people were going to be warned that, hey, there's going to be a test going on. It wasn't until almost 7.30 that they actually started loading this thing up to actually do its, its static fire test. And at 7.58 p.m. is when they launched the siren warning people that something could be happening but nothing ever did. They never did a static fire, and they haven't actually said why. There's been no news from SpaceX directly that stated why they haven't done one. Now, I'm kind of confused because they've done one in the past. They've actually done two, and it's gone successful, so I don't know why they're not doing it right now. I'm curious if there is an actual problem with the system itself because it seems kind of strange why they wouldn't load it sooner, why they wouldn't have had these tests done sooner. So... If I can find any more info about that, or if you know it, let me know in the comments any more info about that. There doesn't seem to be much. So right now, though, we're apparently on track for today, according to Twitter. This is coming from Boca Chica Gal. She lives in the area and got another static fire warning test for today, Wednesday, January 13th. So we might see a static fire today, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Should be loaded because they were loading it last night. We could see one today, and if we see one today, we could see a liftoff tomorrow, Thursday. This is a whole week's worth of postponing at that point. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we can see a liftoff Thursday. As of right now, all we have to hope for is a static fire test for today, and hopefully by tomorrow we're going to see this thing launch. Now, if you don't remember, I specified this before, the significance of this test, obviously, is if this can do not only the hop, but if we can see this thing land back upright without exploding like the SN8, rest in peace to that beautiful machine. Fortunately, it didn't make it, but it gave a lot of insight as to what went wrong and what SpaceX can do to correct the problems. And again, like I said, SpaceX themselves hasn't actually issued a reason as to why this is going on. So like I said before, if you know any other info, if you live in the area especially, I'd love to hear some more info as to why you think they didn't launch it or do the static fire. I'm sorry, do the static fire test yesterday, why they're postponing it till today. Any info you may have, by all means, drop some gems. Let me hear it in the comments. Now, if that's all you wanted to know, if that's all you want to hear, by all means, I understand if you leave the video, just be sure to smash the like button on your way out and consider subscribing to the channel. Now, if you stick around for the whole episode and you want to hear more about SpaceX and other space news, let's dive into that. So, recently, the SpaceX Dragon cargo ship made a successful detach from the ISS. It's going to be coming back down to Earth, and it has over 5,000 pounds of equipment and research material. Now, for the research, I talked about this in a previous episode, the research that they're doing, the, I guess, experiments, you could say, that's in it, a lot of it has to do with um, micro biology and they're testing essentially the bacteria and the germs that can live in these artificial spaces and seeing how they perform how they survive if they do or don't what kind of makes them tick you know what i mean because as humans venture out to mars or start permanent structures on the moon and mars they have to understand the type of microbiology the type of biomes that's going to exist within these artificial areas so this is going to give a lot of insight to scientists because it's been on the iss about how these certain bacteria, how these things react, what causes it to live, what causes it to die. And besides just the artificial aspect of it, it kind of sheds some more light into life itself and what allows microbes to to exist, really, what what makes them do what they do. 
So it'll give a lot of interesting insight as well. So I wouldn't be surprised in the next few weeks to months, NASA over time gives a little more info out on their website about what they're discovering with this. I wouldn't be surprised if they make some announcements on Twitter, if they do find anything that's actually kind of groundbreaking. So definitely going to be interesting to stick around for that and to keep an eye on it and see what they say. Now, the only thing I'm personally confused about is there's kind of some conflicting info. It's saying that this craft is going to splash down in the Gulf of Mexico January 13th today. However, from a statement from NASA, it also says it's going to come down Thursday evening, January 14th. So I don't know which is going to be which. It's saying it's going to splash down in the Florida coast off Tampa around 830 and then up here we're saying no 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 it, it's going to come down today i'm not positive which one that is there's been fa clearance for 13 14 so i i got nothing on that we'll see though it's going to be splashing off the gulf coast off of tampa so if you live in the area if you have any info by all means in the comments let me know if you have any updates stuff like that i'd love to hear and the last thing i have is about the starlink's satellite program and the internet service in russia russia apparently does not want you using the starlink program if you're a russian citizen russia has a pretty tight grip on their media and i wouldn't say necessarily censorship but they control the media with somewhat of an iron fist everything that people do through communications has to be essentially viewed by the russian government to make sure that it complies with their rules regulations the starlink does not so if you're an individual, you could be facing fines of anywhere from $130 to $405 for using their setup. And if you're a legal like business structure, you could face anywhere from $6,700 to $13,000 in legal fines from the Russian government. Russia's pretty scary. I would not mess with them. If I was a Russian citizen, I wouldn't even consider having this Starlink thing because I'm sure the punishments are a lot more than just a little fine in the mail. The other interesting thing, though, that this brings up is that obviously SpaceX wants to break into as many areas as possible. The more customers they have, the more cash flow they have, the more cash flow they have, the more money they have to invest into their research and development and to create better products. So I'm curious to see how SpaceX handles this, if they work with the Russian government, maybe to somehow have a setup with them. I doubt they will because it just doesn't seem like Elon Musk, they don't really play those types of games. I would assume that they would rather just kind of cut their losses with Russia instead of having to play their games with them. They don't really seem like they want to do that. Hopefully it doesn't cause problems with any other government bodies. Uh, China, China's probably not going to let Starlink in, let's be honest. However, other nations, maybe the Middle East, hopefully other European nations, Australia, Canada, blah, blah, blah. Canada already does. Hopefully they'll comply with the Starlink program to expand coverage all over literally all over the world like they want to do so that's all i have for this episode if you like the content if you enjoyed it i really appreciate it if you hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you want more of this content and let me know in the comments if you have any recommendations or ideas more content give me some inspiration anything you want by all means have a good day and i'll keep you updated if i have any more info about the sn9 launch